The idea that Jonathan Gannon, the Eagles defensive coordinator, has been a candidate two straight years for the Texans, and a report came out yesterday that the Cardinals are going to interview him because it feels like both the Cardinals and the Colts are waiting for the Super Bowl to end to hire one of these coordinators. And I know Steve Spagnuolo was 11-41 and 41 as coach of the Rams, but that was a long time ago. I'd like to think he's learned a few things as defensive coordinator in Kansas City since 2019. I'd, I'd like to think he's, he's a little bit better after being with Andy Reid and seeing how Andy Reid operates and learning. Uh, and this is nothing against Jonathan Gannon, but based on last night, if teams were waiting to see what happened last night before finalizing their finalists, for the two remaining vacancies in Arizona and Indianapolis, how is Steve Spagnuolo at least having to sit down with somebody? Am I missing something here? And, I, and, I, and look, I'm a firm believer, I'm a firm believer that just because you go be a coordinator again after you flamed out as a head coach and you do well, that shouldn't entitle you to be a head coach again. But it should at least get you an interview, Chris. It should, it should at least get your name mentioned in the discussion. I know he's 63, but he could coach for another 15 years. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm surprised with, with all this Gannon hype, especially after last night, that Spagnolo isn't going to be mentioned. And what about Eric Bianami again, yet again, no, yet that, again? That's the other one. He still one, has an right. outside shot, outside shot to be the Colts head coach, but there was a report yesterday. Sounds like going Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen. Right, right. Well, maybe, maybe Jim Irsay watched last night's game, and uh, I was thinking – Let's at least give Eric Bieniemy a second interview before we make this final decision. Because he's still the offensive coordinator and has been each of the five years Patrick Mahomes has been the, the quarterback of the Chiefs. Yeah, I, I think that uh, when it comes to that discussion, you know, there's just not enough credit being given to, to either one of those guys. And, yeah, because of Steve Spagnuolo and maybe the way his head coaching career with the Rams, it was less than. We know that. You know, it, it's left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. But you, I, I'm with you in the fact that I, I mean, I don't know how many times have we got to see the guy come up with a special game plan in a big in a big game. I mean, really, uh, with with a team that's built through the offense. You know, that's the other thing too. You know, and, and still make a lot of you know big plays and big moments. And a lot of that is because of his coaching and his scheme. I don't get it. And the Eric Bieniemy thing is beyond me. I I I, I have no idea. And listen, I'm a huge fan of Shane Steichen. I think he is the man and deserving to be a – I mean, come on. He invented an offense here in Philadelphia. He never even did in his, in his life. But he's, he's made it work because of, you know, the quarterback and everything else he had to do it. He was like, wait, I never ran this offense ever, but I guess this is what I got to do to make it work, so I'll invent this offense. And it's, he, so he's phenomenal. But, yeah, the enemy thing, it, it's just – I, it's head scratching to me. It does. It's like it's gotten. It's like too much Mahomes credit, and for that, it like it hurts Bieniemy. I don't really get it, but it looks like we're going to go through another hiring cycle, and Bieniemy's not going to get a head coaching spot. And I'm just shocked by that. And look with Spagnuolo, I'm not making excuses for the guy. He did go seven and nine in 2010, but he was one and 15, and then two and 14, uh, first and third years. Right. But that was just after Stan Kroenke had bought the team. And job number one at that time for Kroenke and his minions in St. Louis was not to win football games, in my opinion. It was to lay the foundation to move to L.A. I firmly believe that from the moment Stan Kroenke bought that team, the L.A. plan was activated. They were in an arbitration in that same time frame, at or about that same time frame, with St. Louis that – that they won over upgrades to the stadium. And that was one of the dominoes en route to eventually picking up the stakes and taking down the tent and moving to L.A. So I just I don't know how much blame really belongs on Spagnolo at a time when maybe higher in the organization yeah. there was another agenda that was being pursued, i.e. moving the team to L.A. And I don't know how honest they ever were with that to anyone, specifically to Spagnola when he took that job after leaving the Giants one season after the Super Bowl 42 game plan that held the Patriots to 14 points and kept them from going 19 and 0. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.